guest is a very funny comedian, as opposed to many of the comedians that we've had on. <laughs> we only have funny comedians here. These, th that new, this newfangled type of comedian that comes on and just tells you stuff and makes you sad? We have none of that here. <laughs> He's very funny. We can catch him, you can catch him at the comic strip in New York. Uh, Brian Scott McFadden, everybody. Brian Scott McFadden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is terrific to be here in Los Angeles because uh, uh, back in New York, I uh, just broke up with a woman who uh, lives in my building. Yeah, so it is uh, really great to be here because she's, uh, she's Russian, she's jealous, and uh, now I have to sneak other dates through the lobby like the witness protection program. <laughs> Because she saw me and another girl after we broke up. Next day I stay in the laundry room, I'm like, hey, uh, hey Anna, did the mail guy come today? Why don't you get your whore to get your mail? <laughs> I, I guess that's a no then, huh? Can I get my laundry? What, your whore doesn't do your laundry? <laughs> well, she's already getting the mail, <laughs> you know. I don't, I don't want to ask her to multitask. <laughs> She used to work for a CNN, uh, and I love CNN. My favorite thing on CNN is when they hire the BBC reporters to do the uh, disaster stories, famine, civil war, genocide stories, and all the stories sound exactly the same. They always have that one guy that comes on. A young child <laughs> wanders the streets of a mud-cracked hillside. His tear-stained face and the gunfire tells the story. For a tragedy has taken hold here that has crippled this once peaceful village. A tragedy that appears to have no end. Hakimi is a local tribesman. I don't know what I will do. Things are very bad here now. This was a peaceful place to live, but we are terrified. How will we feed our families? <laughs> Anger has turned to fear here. <laughs> the provisional government seems helpless to stop the bloodshed. And if supplies do not arrive soon, all may be lost. But there are no winners or losers here. <laughs> Just the sad people staring into an uncertain future. Brian Kittle, CNN, Sri Lanka. Who is that guy? Every story. He's on every story, except he's never on the local news. I always wondered why that was. And I figured it out, because we don't have that stuff in America. We're pretty lucky. They have famine, civil war, genocide in other countries. I live in New York City. We had a doorman strike, and people freaked out. <laughs> How's that for perspective, you know? People in other countries don't even have doors. Much less a guy whose only job it is to open it for you. That's why they never let that CNN guy cover the local news, because a doorman strike would not nearly have the same tragic ring to it. <laughs> An old man shuffles the lobby of a posh Upper East Side apartment building, <laughs> unable to get outside. A strike has taken hold here, one that has pitted neighbor against neighbor in a struggle to survive. <laughs> Mr. Rosenberg has lived here for 35 years. I don't know what the hell to do. You come down, you can't get out the damn door here. <laughs> I pay my rent. When are they going to settle this thing? I come in, they're yelling, they're picketing, they're screaming at me. Settle it, damn it. <laughs> Anger has turned to fear here. <laughs> the strike has affected everything here. An order of Chinese food arrives. <laughs> but there is no one there to greet him. <laughs> Some of these yuppies have not eaten takeout in weeks. <laughs> Even the delivery man is angry. Unga dao, unda banga dao. Banda hunga no unga na hama na na hao. I don't know what I will do. <laughs> Things are very bad here now. How will we feed our families? <laughs> One local woman seemed especially angry. Why doesn't he just get his whore to open the door for him? 
another sad victim. Brian Kittle, CNN Park Avenue. Thank you very much. Thank you.